G'day cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lockout's Four Driving, we're going to show you a dead simple way to put in an indicator light to tell you whether a fuse is blown or not. So let's blow the fuse, and there you go, the indicator light's on. But before we show you how to wire it up, let's look at the basics of voltage, amperage, and resistance. So you can think of this as like a, a garden hose. Now, your voltage is the difference in charge between two points. Well, think of that as the water pressure in the hose. Now, current is the rate at which the charge is flowing, or with the analogy with the hose, the diameter of that hose. And finally, the resistance, it's the material's tendency to resist the flow of charge. Or you can think of that as the tap at the end of the hose, which is resisting the flow of water at the end of it. Now we've done that, let's have a look at resistance. Now onto the resistor. Now this is the sort of resistor you'd see usually on a printed circuit board. This is what's called a through hole metal film resistor, but that's of no consequence for us really. And this is a symbol you might see it depicted by on a circuit diagram or a schematic diagram. And the colors on the resistor correlate with a certain value. Now there are acronyms to remember this and unfortunately the only one I remember is not very PC so I'd be sharing that with you. <laughs> but here we go, yellow and if we look at yellow here, yellow is number four and then next to that we've got violet and violet or purple is number seven. So we got four, seven and then black is zero and then we have our last band for our values, which is our multiplier. And that is number one with black. And then we have our tolerance band. Now our tolerance band here is 1%. So we have 470 or 470 times by our multiplier, which is one, gives us obviously 470 with a tolerance of 1%. So that's a tolerance range of how accurate the resistor actually is. So we have a 470 ohm resistor with a tolerance of 1%. And that's how you read resistors. Or you could always get your multimeter <laughs> and just put it across it on the resistance setting and see how much you reads. So here we have a light emitting diode. And they're different to a traditional globe that you might be used to in that they require a resistor to work with them and they have a positive and a negative side, or the positive side is called the anode, and the negative side is called the cathode. And this is the symbol you might see on a circuit diagram or a schematic diagram, same sort of thing. Now the typical forward current that's required for this particular LED to operate is around about 20 milliamps, or 0 0.020 amps. And the maximum forward current for it to operate is 30 milliamps or 0 0.030 amps. Now we know that we can use what's called Ohm's law to work out the correct resistor for the voltage that we're using. Now we have a basic understanding of what voltage, amperage and resistance is. We can use what's called Ohm's law invented by this bloke here, George Simon Ohm. Must have been a top bloke with that middle name, let me tell you. Lived quite a few years ago, and he came up with Ohm's Law. So we have voltage, amperage, and resistance. Now you can read the description up here. It says Ohm's Law states that the current through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the voltage across those two points. Doesn't really matter for our purposes. The VIR triangle is the one you need to remember. Okay, and that states that the voltage equals the amperage times the resistance. Now the problem we have is we know the voltage, we know the amperage, but we don't know the resistance. And that's what we're trying to work out. So what we need to do is what's called transposition of the formula. We need to change it around so our resistance is a subject of this formula. And this is how we do it. So we need to change the subject to resistance. So our resistance equals our voltage divided by our amperage. Or if we needed to make voltage a subject you can see amperage times resistance equals our voltage so we just use the vir triangle and that will give you a, a visual way to remember how ohm's law works 
So now we know our resistance is 12 volts, and we can divide that by our 20 milliamps. And that gives us a figure of 600 ohms. And that would give us 20 milliamps across that LED. But you can't get a 600 ohm resistor. Well, not easily anyway. So what you can do is get a usual value, 470 ohms. And if we supplement that in, we go V divided by R, or 12 divided by 470, gives us 26 milliamps here. Now, remember our tolerance for our LED, this particular LED was 20 to 30 milliamps. And that's almost smack bang in the middle there. So that'll work fine. Righto, let's build that circuit. Now, back when I was a young fella, there was no such thing as an online circuit simulator. But these days, I tell you, people have got it better than they ever know. The only way we worked out whether a circuit was viable or not was to either get it working or let the magic smoke out. <laughs> But these days, we have online circuit simulators, which are absolutely fantastic. Now, this one is the multi-sim, and it saves you burning up components. So what we can do is we can grab a voltage here. So look, there's a DC source, and we can bung that on there. Once that's on there, see, it says 5 volts. We want to change that around. So let's go and make that 12 volt, like what you'd see in the car. There we go. So we got, now we have a 12 volt source. And of course, we're going to need a fuse. Now they're under the passive components here. So we'll get that fuse and we'll bung that there. And we need a load. So we need to power something. And they have a lamp there. That'll do the job for us. Now orientation is what isn't what we needed. So we'll turn him around. Oop. <laughs> I've got to get it eventually. And we'll move him over here. And we're going to need some way to turn it on and some way to short it out. Whoops, and they're under the switches there. So we'll put in a switch here. And we'll put in a second switch over on the right-hand side. Now, the reason we need the second switch is to short it out. There we go. There's the switches there. I lost that there for a second, showing my age. And... We'll put it there. Now we just need to join it all up with wires. But don't forget, of course, we need our LED to show our blown fuse. So we'll go into resistors. I believe they're in here. No, they're not, actually. They're over here. Here they are. Go into diodes, and we'll grab an LED. And we'll change the orientation of our LED. There we go. And don't forget, we're going to need a resistor with that LED. So we'll grab our resistor. And we'll join him directly onto our LED. Now, our LED here is 1 kilo ohm. I'm going to change that. I think I'll make it 470 ohms. 470 ohms. <laughs> okay. Now we can just join up all the wires, which I'll do quickly now. Okay, so we've got all our componentry joined in there. Now we've got a switch to just turn on the lamp. We've got a one amp fuse there. That'll be fine for our load on our lamp here. We've got a way to short it out. And we've got our LED fault indicator here with our 470 ohm resistor, which will provide about 26 milliamps that we worked out before to the actual LED. So let's try it out. Let's press the play button. See how we go. So now we'll complete the circuit and we've got our lamp lit up. Now if we short out that lamp, it should blow our fuse here and set off that LED. And there we go. We've blown the fuse and we're providing now current to the LED because electricity will always take the path of least resistance. So before, the path of least resistance was through that fuse. It's just like water it's just like mechanical energy in, say, a differential. Or for the parents amongst us, it's just like your teenage children. Electricity will always take the path of least resistance. And you need to make sure you have a complete circuit. And we didn't, of course, when our switch was out here, that would enable 
the current to flow, either from the negative to the positive for electron flow or from the positive to the negative for conventional flow. I'll let you guys argue that one out in the comment section. Anyway, so now we know it's in theory that it works and we didn't let any smoke out other than blowing our fuse. So now let's build the actual circuit on a breadboard. And here we have the completed circuit. Now, for those who aren't familiar with this sort of stuff, this is what's known as a breadboard. This is how we used to design and test circuitry before online circuit analysis tools became readily available. So we'd design the circuit by hand usually and then pop it onto something like a breadboard and check the outputs and make sure there's no magic smoke that comes out. Uh, this is a mushy meter. So this is essentially a smartphone multimeter. It does a lot of other features like vlogging, etc. So you see a bit of that coming up on the channel. And here is our voltage in DC. So if we put the meter across our two inputs, you can see there we've got about 12.3 volts coming into it. Now because our fuse here is whole, we should have about 12 volts coming out of it as well. Now, these things are a little bit tricky. This is actually an LED with an inbuilt resistor. So there's a resistor in the bit of heat shrink running up the side here. So we don't have to worry about connecting a resistor and an LED. You can buy these readily available. I think this one came from JCAR from memory. Anyway, as you can see, our green is illuminated. So our fuse is whole. But when we press the button, our light turns on and our fuse is blown. So we can pull that out and I might actually swap it over and I'll put it onto ohms so we can check whether the fuse is actually blown. And I'll move this over to resistance and if I touch the probes together, there we go, we've got essentially no resistance there. But if I put it either side of the fuse, there we go, we're out of range. So the fuse is blown. So the circuit actually works. Now, guys, if you like this video, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not once, not thrice, but twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. So if you've enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon. It's really important to us and you won't miss out on our future content. Now, if you want to support the channel, by all means, consider becoming a patron on Patreon and you'll get things like early access to our videos on YouTube. Either way, we hope to see you out on the tracks.